the reason we launched Partick Africa goes back uh, several years. There were a few weak signals. I think the, the first one that we was striking for us, it was an article in the New York Times two years ago saying that French would be the most spoken language in the world in 2050. How is that possible? And so we look deeply and it's the growth of French-speaking African country that is responsible for that. Of course, that's not the, the real start of the story. Then um, there was another thing. In 2016, we saw a report about um, smartphone deliveries in the world, so Android, iOS, etc. And there were more smartphones shipped in Africa than in Europe. And that really opened our eyes and said, well, there's something going on there in terms of growth. And so we're not specialists of Africa, so we looked for a team. And then we were super fortunate to find two great new partners. Uh, one, uh, Tijan, was the head of Google for Africa for the last uh, seven years. And the other one, Cyril, has been working, uh, was basically raised in Africa and has been working 20 years in the telco startup uh, business in Africa. And that, that combination of two talents, um, that was basically the starting point for us. And we realized that there is an opportunity around about 600 million people that is getting into the digital, digital economy. You find those people in what uh, they call the kings. So the kings are five countries, Kenya, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa. And in those kings, you have tremendous growth, uh, the emergence of a middle class that wants to consume. And there are tremendous challenges because it's not like in Europe and the US where uh, it's easy to reach the end user. So all of the startups now are thinking about new ways to deliver those services to the end user, to the consumer. And that is spanning four verticals, uh, retail, healthcare, finance, and education. These are the four big challenges. And, and we see that generation of entrepreneurs that are basically solving problems in a new way. They're not just copying uh, successes from the US and from Europe. That was the first wave of startup. And now there is the second wave of startup, which is basically inventing stuff that are not even invented in Europe. I have a fun anecdote. Um, so when my partner Tidiane comes from Senegal to Paris to visit us, he's always shocked that he cannot buy his croissant at the bakery with his mobile. Because that's standard in Africa. I mean, you buy your croissant at the bakery with your mobile. And you can't in Paris, so that gives you that gives you the magnitude the, the, of that that uh, leap that they're taking in a number of, of, of industry. What is interesting is that there's, there's a lot of startups, but not a lot of VC funds. So we saw an opportunity to be the first international VC to launch uh, on Africa, and that was the luck that we had in 1982 in Silicon Valley. So when we started in San Francisco, uh, 30 six years ago now, uh, we were fortunate to be one of the first and, and ever since we remained part of that ecosystem. So it's, it's always great to be part of that ecosystem and build that network as it's growing.